I want to thank all of you for being here. I, I wanted to follow up. Um, General Jones, you had mentioned um, that NATO should take a more aggressive leadership role. And I'd like to get to the question of what NATO's role should be more specifically with regard to the fight against ISIS. So you, you talked, General Jones, about um, NATO developing a strategy, an ISIL strategy. And then I know that in the Warsaw summit, uh, they're going to deploy AWACS. Uh, they're also going to put some uh, training forces into Iraq. Uh, but what greater role could NATO play here? Because uh, to address ISIL, as I think about a uh, NATO member, for example, Turkey, um, with what just happened in Istanbul and uh, what needs to happen and the operations right now on the Manbij pocket there along the 90 kilometers along the Turkey border where it's been a, obviously a, a place where refugees have gone back and forth and also, as we know, fighters, foreign fighters have gone back and forth, which has been very significant. Um, I'd love to hear from each of you where do you think in the ideal NATO's role could be along with combined with American leadership and what should our leadership role be in encouraging NATO and the Arab nations to join together so that we can more effectively defeat ISIS? Senator, I think that uh, NATO has uh, the capacity uh, to be very, very uh, influential in, in helping uh, Arab countries form their own version of NATO, for example. I, I think uh, there's, 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 the logic would indicate that that would be a natural mission. Um, uh, first, the first obligation for NATO is to respond to um, its members' needs and whether they feel threatened that we act as one and we help, and we help in any way we can. We've, we've done that several times, particularly with Turkey. Um, and I think we should, we should continue to support our membership. But beyond that, um, if we really want to avoid uh, a, a human disaster, another human disaster, perhaps even bigger, uh, I think proactive engagement in different countries in Africa, North Africa in particular, but also Sub-Saharan Africa to help them form um, security measures that, are, that enable them to defend their borders and to protect themselves, uh, to share intelligence, and collectively band together with like-minded nations to show ISIL-like organizations that they have no future and they have no hope. Uh, and that involves training, it involves uh, all kinds of uh, development of uh, border security, national security forces, um, and the deployment, I think, of, uh, of NATO forces in the Mediterranean, for instance, we have unparalleled naval uh, capabilities. And uh, I think we need much more cohesion within the alliance to project that kind of uh, sentiment that NATO is not simply coming in to invade or to, to cause more problems, but to actually prevent problems from happening. So it's a, it's a whole litany of things that I think uh, NATO, uh, NATO, the new NATO in the 21st century can and should take on. Ambassador? Senator, I think you're right to focus on Turkey and the fight against the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. The Turks want a closer relationship with us on issues like refugees, possible safe havens in the future, should that be possible, should this or a future administration want to go in that direction. We are also going to need NATO attention in Libya, where the Islamic State, as you well know, has an outpost. And so the allies are going to be critical. Um, the terrorist attacks in Europe have been a huge wake-up call for the European publics and their political leaders. So I think we're getting much more receptivity on counterterrorism, uh, intelligence cooperation, judicial cooperation from the Europeans. Where I would want to see NATO act together against the Islamic State, I don't think it's going to be politically possible to have everybody, 28 countries, agree on a NATO military mission. That would help to sh us to shoulder the responsibility. It would ask the Europeans to do more, and they should do more, both in North Africa and Levant. But I don't, I don't think it's going to be politically possible to have NATO act as one militarily. So we'll have to create these coalitions of NATO members. And that's another reason why NATO is so valuable to us, because of our joint training we're able to work together even in smaller coalitions. Mm -hmm. Ms. Smith? Uh, I would love to see NATO get more engaged in the 
counter ISIL coalition in general because I think it brings a great deal of international legitimacy. I think NATO has just incredible command and control uh, assets that would be very useful. And NATO also has an array of partners in the neighborhood, in the region, that it could very easily work with as it did in its Libya uh, operations some time ago. But I am with Ambassador Burns. I think it is unlikely in the short term. The debate is changing. Uh, but I don't see any major muscle movements in that regard for a couple of reasons. One, Europe has about uh, 2 million soldiers. Uh, and there are estimates that about 5% of them are actually deployable. So there's the sheer logistics of getting there that some of them literally don't have the forces to send and don't have the ability, if they do have the forces, to get them there. I mean, there are real capability challenges. Two, you hear from Europeans oftentimes this argument that the NATO brand is too negative, uh, that NATO's not welcome in the region. There's this mythology in my mind that NATO getting engaged more aggressively in the counter ISIL mission would not be helpful. Uh, and so we're up against that debate. I think we could have that debate and work through it, but it is there and it comes up quite frequently. Uh, and then also I would note that NATO as an institution always looks for a request to get engaged. And so you find NATO members saying, well, we're, the phone's not ringing. You know, we're not, we're not, we haven't been asked to get engaged, which is a little bit of re, a, a sad excuse. Uh, but they do wait to be uh, called upon to assist. And so they're probably hoping, well, not hoping, actually, to be truthful, that they would have a formal request come from Iraq, say, that they want NATO to take ownership of this mission, or a call from the United States, which has not come either. So I know my time is up, but couldn't we call this? Of and course. Say, look, yes. at, look at what's happened. Paris, Brussels. Uh, we could. Istanbul. Yeah. Um, this is about all of us. And this is back to the question about U.S. leadership. Right. We should be asking those questions. Absolutely. Right. Thank you.